Over the last two and a half years, I've been slowly and carefully building my dream vintage Leica set. I spent a lot of time searching and hunting down each lens one by one, just trying to find each in good condition and good quality. And last week, I found a gem and the last piece to complete my set. I'm excited to talk about what I love about each lens, how I use each focal length, and just share an overview of these beautiful 40-year-old pieces of glass. My name is Kevin Reyes, I'm a DP out of LA, and I'd like to introduce you to my Leica R Cinema Prime set. Leica lenses and vintage glass in general has become so popular over the years, and for good reason. They're lightweight, they're compact, most of them cover full frame, they're usually built like tanks, they have longer focus throws compared to still lenses, and they have visual imperfections that a lot of DPs are looking for, and they're more affordable than modern cine lenses. Many people ask me about serial numbers. Which Leicas are better than the others? Are the earlier models better than the later models? What's the deal with that? From what I've gathered about Leica R serial numbers, there's really two schools of thought on which ones are more desirable, and this is completely subjective. In general, the Leicas that are the best for most filmmakers are usually between 1960 and later. On one side, you've got earlier versions with serial numbers ranging from three, four zeros and higher. These copies are younger, manufactured from the mid 80s into the 90s, and they're known to have a little bit more of a cleaner look to them. They're sharper, they have less character, less artifacts and aberrations throughout the image. They're just cleaner overall. And on the other hand, you've got the older copies, with serials from the 300s and earlier. These copies are known to have more of a vintage character. More imperfections, more artifacting, aberrations, lens flaring, they're less sharp, generally with more of an organic look. Many have said that the later models are the more desirable ones, which is why their prices are so high. But more and more filmmakers are opting for the earlier models because they're just more affordable and because the DPs and filmmakers that I know, they want some of that character and some of those imperfections. They embrace those in order to create a beautiful organic image. As the years of producing these lenses went by, it's said that the manufacturing techniques, the coatings, and even the factories where they were produced evolved over time, which led to varying color shifts, flares, and overall looks in version 1s versus version 2s. and. 1970s versus 1990s will look completely different. And this is why you might see people trying to build sets that closely match in their serial numbers. The chances of these copies having similar looks is just higher. I've learned it's best to aim for all the serials within four to five years of each other. Obviously the closer the serial numbers are to each other, the more chances they have matching each other in color and variances. And this is why I've been meticulously hunting down these lenses one by one for over two years now. I wanted good copies that all matched, and so I chose the serial numbers ranging from 1979 to the 80s. And I chose these years because they sit right in the middle. And they feature a look that captures a taste of both worlds. Kind of dirty and grittiness, but they also have a little bit of a clean look as well. They kind of sit right in the middle of the timeline of when the best of these Leicas were being made. My set consists of six primes, starting from longest to shortest. The 90mm Summicron R F2, the 50mm Summicron R F2, the 35mm Summicron R F2, the 28mm El Merit R F2.8, the 24mm El Merit R F2.8, and last but not least, in the last piece of this puzzle, the Holy Grail, the 19mm El Merit R F2.8. Man, I love this lens. I found most of these on eBay and a couple of them on Facebook. Now I'd love to talk about each of these lenses individually, kind of what they mean to me, each focal length, how I shoot with them, and what I love about each of them. Starting with the longer glass, the 90mm Summicron R F2. I love the 90mm, it's such a great lens. It's great for really separating your subject from the background and really pointing the viewer towards that one subject and focusing just on that subject. Uh, I use it for tight angles of an interview. Sometimes I'll use it just for dramatic close-ups or even just to get details. I just love how it throws the background out of focus with a smooth bokeh. It is a little longer than the rest of the lenses in length, but it's still super compact and one of my favorites for sure.
Next up is the 50 millimeter Summicron R F2. This was the first Leica glass I hunted down back in 2017. This lens was the staple of the set. It was the one I would build the rest of my set around. It was the second copy I owned. The first one was a little bit of a later serial number and I was just learning about Leicas at the time and I knew I wanted later copies, so I sold it for this one. The 50 millimeter focal range can cover so many different types of shots. Now going a little bit wider, we've got the 35 millimeter Summicron R F2. By far one of my favorite focal lengths to shoot on, especially on Super 35 sensors. It's one of the lenses that gets pulled out the most because it's just so versatile. I can use it for interviews, I can use it for fashion films, narrative, you name it. Here's some footage I took with the 35. Next up is a 28mm Elmerit R f2.8. This lens was a pleasant surprise, and it's starting to give my 35mm a run for its money. I got this copy more recently. It was the second of two 28mm I got. The first one had a slightly stiffer focus ring, so I got a second copy that was in better shape, the focus ring was smooth, and not only that, it matched the rest of my serials a little bit closer. I've been using the 28mm more and more. I feel like it's the widest you can go without getting weird face distortions, and it might become my favorite lens of the entire set. But we'll see, I haven't had the chance to use it as much as the 35 because I just recently added it to the set. But by far, it's becoming one of my favorite focal lengths to shoot on. Now going into the wider focal ranges, the 24mm Elmerit R f2.8. Whenever I talk to people about this lens, I call it the wild child of the set. And I say that because it's like the odd brother in the family. He doesn't quite fit in, he looks kind of different, he feels a little different, and he definitely produces a different image. The first thing I notice about this lens is how much and how easily it flares. Even pointing it at a soft light source will give you some weird flaring and ghosting. It's the only Leica R that was based off of a cheaper Minolta design. Coatings are different, mechanics are different, focus throw is significantly shorter, but all that being said, I've learned to love it for its uniqueness. I've used him more and more when I want some dirtiness to the image, or I just want a lot of flaring and aberrations. I've used him a ton on the gimbal. I found that mixing all the dirty imperfections that comes from this lens with a smooth and clean movement like you get from a gimbal creates a nice mixture of two worlds combined together, which to me results in such tasteful images. And last but not least, the holy grail of the set and the most recent addition to the family the 19mm Elmerit R f2.8. I put off hunting this fellow down for a number of reasons. First off, even back then, it was so expensive. And secondly, I was hoping I wouldn't have to buy it because the 24 would have covered my wide angle. But seeing as how the 24 is a wild child and doesn't necessarily fit all the shoots I'm on, I had to set my sights on the 19mm. I found two moderately priced Leicas, one on eBay and one from a private seller I met on Facebook. The first one was immaculate and already had Cinemaz. The second one that came in was a backup, but after receiving and inspecting it, I found it had a ton of moisture and haze underneath the front element, so I sent it back for a full refund. If ever you're going to buy 40-year-old lenses, you definitely want to take a close look at it. I'll show you this one. If you shine a hard light at it, you can see haze and fog, those little streaks kind of in, in the lens. And then on this side, it's gonna be hard to see, but there's a little bit of fungus growth on the end. But you guys can see that fog in there. That's not a good sign, and the, the seller didn't say anything about it because it's harder to see when you've just got regular light on it. All 
of my lenses have been fully modded for cinema use. All done by Simod Lens. They feature declicked and dampened aperture rings, machine focused gears, EF mount conversions, 77 millimeter step up rings, and a custom front and rear cap. The process took about a month during COVID and cost me about $267 per lens before shipping. Duclos is another reputable and trustworthy company doing great Cinemods to vintage lenses, so look at both Simod and Duclos. There is one downside that I've run into when declicking the aperture ring. With Leicas in particular, there's a spring-loaded mechanism within the aperture ring that causes the aperture to gradually slip or creep over time. My 24, which was modded a long time ago with the previous owner, um, is definitely starting to slip as you can see in this time-lapse video. Um, and that's caused so much frustration. You can imagine on set having your lens set to 2.8 and 30 minutes or 45 minutes later, it's completely open to F8. It's unacceptable and I usually have to gaff it. The only option is to get it re-greased. Now I've spoken to Ron at Simod and a couple guys on the Facebook group who have said that you just need to get it re-greased every few years or so. Um, that's not something that I want to do, so I may consider reversing my aperture declick mod and making it click again. Um, I still haven't decided yet. That's one thing I wished I knew before getting my apertures declicked. Should you invest in vintage glass? Well, I think good quality lenses in general are a great investment, especially lenses that cover full frame. Although with the rise in popularity, prices of these 40 plus year old lenses are skyrocketing. I remember when I first started looking at Leica glass in 2017, prices were less than half of what they are now. Nevertheless, I don't see the value coming down anytime soon, so if you're going to invest in vintage glass, you're better late than never. There's a ton of resources online that I've learned from, but I found most of my lenses on eBay. I use the save search functions and it alerts my phone the minute a specific keyword comes up. Facebook is also a good place to look. I've learned so much about vintage lenses from the Facebook group called Vintage Lenses for Video. So much knowledge and so much resource in that group. Before pulling the trigger on any lenses, make sure that the seller provides detailed images of the lens showing close-ups on every part. Have them shine a light through the reverse side of the glass to reveal the impurities like fungus or haze or scratches. Try to have a return agreement in case something was overlooked. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna see micro dust particles in the lens and I'll leave that up to you if that's something that is a pass, um, but it's hard to find any sort of 40 year old lens that doesn't have at least a little bit of micro dust in there. That's something that I don't really mind if it's minimal. I've been doing a ton of tests comparing these older Leica lenses to modern lenses um, just to see the differences. So I plan on sharing those comparisons with you guys here on YouTube. Well, stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this overview of my Leica cinema set. I'm glad you got to meet them. They were sure happy to meet you and I can't wait to show you guys more footage that I shoot with them. I'll see you guys next time. God bless. <laughs>